Hello and welcome to the live Rams pregame show delivered by Little Caesars, the official pizza of your Los Angeles Rams. Good Sunday, everyone. I'm JB Long, joined by my broadcast colleagues and friends Maurice Jones-Drew and DeMarco Farr. As the Los Angeles Rams are home in week two to the Atlanta Falcons, a couple of franchises anxious to get their first win of a new season. So much to get to in today's matchup, including players to watch. But let's start big picture and just how long a week it has been since the Buffalo Bills were here on the kickoff Thursday. Well, first of all, let me say this. It's good to be back with you guys because I missed that Thursday. Is that why they lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Oh, here, here, give me a hug. No. Give me a hug. I miss nice, you guys so nice. much. Let's get back in rhythm. Okay, now we're back. So this is the thing. You come off of that loss. You still have to remember you are a champion. And we talked about this earlier, DeMarco Farr. You are a champion. Champions bounce back. You may take one on the chin. You may get punched if you want to talk boxing. But it's get back to your game plan, get back to who you are, and go out there and dominate. Yeah, that was a long, sustained beating. I mean, that's what happened last week. So I hope you haven't forgotten it if you're one of the Rams players. I hope it's something that you never want to revisit again. I hope it was that way on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, getting ready for the Sunday yes. game. But to your point, JB, it seems like it was last year that we saw Buffalo here. And hopefully it was so long ago that we don't recognize yeah. the Rams that show up here today compared to what we saw in week one. Pass pro, probably the biggest overarching issue, I think. And not only do they have to make adjustments, they have to bring in some new personnel. Coleman Shelton slides over to center for Brian Allen and Tremaine Anchor will start at right guard. You know what? Coleman Shelton going in the center, I like. I think he was kind of, dare I say, miscast at right guard, not very big. Center, I think he's perfect for. I am so excited for Tremaine Anchor. When they drafted him in 2020, there was designs on him being a guard anyway. So now you get an opportunity. There's a spot there. He's got those long arms. He's about six foot two. So I hope he's ready for prime time. I hope he's more excited than nervous going in as a starter. You know, those front five, and I don't just mean to limit it to the five starting mm -hmm. offensive linemen. I'm talking about the entire Rams offensive operation. It wasn't just pass protection that broke down. Fewer than three yards per carry for what we thought was going to be a revamp rushing attack. Well, the thing is, the Buffalo Bills came out with some very big, athletic, strong inside guys. That kind of the Rams are historically with under Sean McVay has struggled with those type of guys. So you got to find a way to get back to your running game, get back to your outside zone, get back to your play action pass. Go back to that old 2018 playbook that we call the Bible, the <laughs> one that you really perfected. So in this situation, new offensive lineman, you want to run the ball a little bit more effectively. You have another task. Uh, Grady Jarrett's coming out. That is a tough man to block. So you want to protect your offensive line by running the ball, quick sets, and getting the ball out quickly. Maurice, what was your take on the absence of Cam Akers' contributions in week one? Uh, very disappointing. Uh, I felt like, you know, but again, I'm not a coach, so I understand that Sean McVay, they have a standard. And if you don't reach that standard, you don't play, and that's I respect that. Regardless of what's going on, you have a backfield full of guys. Cam came in, has some things. Hopefully he took that personal, right? I think the, the Michael Jordan thing, I took that personal. Yeah, yeah. And now you so. come back out there and you play – as if, you know, you have something to prove because you do have something to prove. You want to get your starting spot back. You want to help this offense getting down the field. Hey, look, this is not a new narrative. The Rams live in 11 personnel. They like to play their starters. But DeMarco, they kind of took that to an extreme against the Bills. We didn't see much beyond those first 11. No, I think you only, what, you, you kept up two tight ends. So, and Tyler Higby's one of them. He's going to play most of the game. I thought that was going to change. I thought we're going to see more of the backups going in, at least for Tyler Higby. But if you're going to play 11, either way, either check it down or you're going to have to protect. So that puts your offensive line back on front street. You're going to have to keep those guys off Matthew Stafford to move the football down the field. A much different challenge against the Atlanta Falcons, who should have won a rivalry game against the Saints at home in their opener. But it's a gnarly one nonetheless. This is a tough prep when you look at the Rams defense against Cordero Patterson, Marcus Mariota, and the Falcons. Well, there, it's unconventional. You have a receiver who's playing tailback, coached by my old college roommate, Michael Petrie. So I, I got some insight on that. I want to give it out too early. But this is the thing. He can be moved at wide receiver. He can be moved at running back. He can be in the slot. So who's going to cover him? And how that person's going to cover him is going to be important. And then Marcus Mariota with his legs. We yeah. know that. Like At the end of the day, yes, he can play quarterback, but – He's able to extend drives by running on third down, finding a way to eke out first downs. You have to play sound football in that, in that matter. On. Let me pump the brakes. So Cordero Patterson had 22 carries last week, and he's still a run, he's still a receiver. He can. That is a running back, and you know it. But he runs routes like a receiver. 22 carries, a buck 20 career highs, yeah. and running people over. You're a running back wearing how, 84. How about Debo of the East? <laughs> Fair enough. I like that. Fair actually. enough. But I mean, but running the football tough, Marcus Mariota, they're tough. I mean, the way he runs 72 yards last week, but it's assignment football, especially for those edge guys. So let me bring in Floyd. Let me talk about T. Lou. Let me talk about Hollins. 
they're going to have to be spectacular yes. today. Yes. You can't be spectators. You have got to be playmakers today to stop this offense. Well, looking forward to seeing the inactives. Hopefully it means good news for Flo that they did not promote an outside linebacker after he had a bit of an injury scare popped up on the injury report midweek. But you want to see Mariota have to beat the Rams from the pocket, even though they've taken two skill position players, two targets with top 10 picks the last couple of years. Just watching them. And look, Atlanta wants to be run first, right? Which means they are running on first down. Mariota's a part of that. Uh, it's tough because that quarterback is a part of the run game. That, that defensive end has to take cutback and try to cut him off. So I think job number one for the Rams is force the game back to Mariota, make him have to throw to beat you. Behind all those rushing yards, like you said, it was an inaccurate quarterback. So if you can force him to throw, it bodes well for the Rams to win this game. And I'll say this, too. When you have a running quarterback in this running game, it forces you to play 11 on 11 football. Mm -hmm. You don't get to play 10 on 11. Like with the Rams, you're not worried about Stafford scrambling and trying to beat you. So you have that safety that can play in the middle field. Now that safety has to be able to come up and make a tackle on a guy that pretty much can be a runner. And so in that situation, first and second down, assignment football. Third down, get after the quarterback. Well, you're talking about having a lifeguard at the pool party? Yeah. Isn't that Bobby Wagner this week? Isn't that where his institutional knowledge comes in handy against uh, an opponent like this? I hope so. I mean, look, when they do give it off to Cordero Patterson, and it's mano y mano in the hole, right. I think Bo I would take Bobby Wagner versus just about every running back in the game, especially a converted wide receiver. But when Mariota keeps it, that's outside edge. That's safety coming down. That might be a corner. You're going to have to make a tackle. And if you if you miss the tackle, make them bounce to the sideline. You can't let them gouge you between the hash marks. We're we'll talking about Kyle Pitts and Drake London, a couple of their top targets on the youthful end of the spectrum in just a moment. But let's bring in the third member. Fourth? One, two, three. Fourth, fourth member <laughs> of our team, Erica Tamposi, with Ricky's Rundown. Good afternoon, Erica. Hey, guys. How are you? Yeah, fourth. Remember that. The fantastic four. So, yeah, Ricky's Rundown. I wanted to throw out a few things that I'm looking forward to this game. So, number one. Today's game theme is Kids Day. And during the halftime show, we're gonna have an epic kids takeover and they're gonna be rocking the Rams house. Although, also on that note, the Rams Kids Show debuted this week on YouTube, so make sure you check that out if you haven't already. Second, number 99 has 99 sacks. Yes, that's right. Aaron Donald is one career sack away from 100. The only other member to join the 100 club is Hall of Fame John Randall. So looking at that, the Falcons allowed zero sacks in week one. So I'm interested to see if Aaron Donald can get it. However, he's gotten a sack against his two career games before that. So that's something to watch as well. Third, you were just kind of teasing it, JB. Kyle Pitts. He was the, the second most um, receiving yards, over 1,000, for a rookie tight end, second most in the NFL. But last week, the Saints again held him to only two receptions for 19 yards. So can the Rams defense contain Kyle Pitts? So yeah, those are like some of the three things that I'm pretty interested in. All right, fourth member of our team, but first in our hearts, Ricky yes. Hollywood coming back to you in just a moment. To her point about Pitts, I took it as a healthy sign for Atlanta's offense year two for him that he wasn't the focal point he didn't need to be for them to be effective on offense I think you're exactly right they're able to run the ball you had Drake Lennon being able to make some contested catches so each week they're adding more weapons that the defense has to worry about you have four guys if you think about it four guys that you have to worry about Cordero Patterson Marcus Mariota with his legs Kyle Pitts and Drake London you have to find a way to force one of those guys to be the guy and then double team or whatever it may be. So again, they're getting better, but they're still young. If you're the Rams, you got to shut down the running game and force it, like you said, DeMarco, force him to throw the ball into double coverage mm -hmm. on two of those guys. I love this next segment. It's titled, Matt Gay is very good at kicking. <laughs> See that right there? I love that. That's he appropriate. <laughs> uh, he is blameless, I guess, in the week one loss. See if everybody shares a part, but he was excellent. In a week, a rocky week one around the league where kicking cost some teams a win, including really in Atlanta. How much of an asset has Matt Gay as a pro bowler become for this team? I think he's been tremendous. I mean, look, when you don't think about your place kicker, that's good. Uh, when you have every confidence in the world that he can bang it from 57 deep, that's good stuff. But that's the last thing you want to do to win a football yeah. game, right? I mean, right. you don't want to depend on your place kicker. But Matt Gay, his kickoffs have been outstanding, and his place kicks have been great. I think that part of this game has been perfect. But, like I said, if you have to line up for a 60-yarder to win the game, I hope you have the leg to do it. I mean, 
That 57-yarder, it splashed off this net just above your shoulder, but it might as well have hit the Super Bowl banner up there. I want to say it looked like him when at Top Golf when he was swinging oh the clubs. Oh, my gosh. I mean, he was hitting rockets almost yeah. over the fence. So you love that. Again, DeMarco, you're exactly right. When you have a kicker, it doesn't put stress on your offense to have to yeah. score every time, right? But, again, you still want to score every time. So uh, I think, again, it's just a luxury. All right, so other NFL teams have kicker envy. MJD and DeMarco and I have – Driver envy. We do. For yes. Matt Gay, haven't seen the way that he can stripe it. Let's get to matchups to watch for. Who wants to start here? Who's got a matchup between the Falcons and the Rams? On I'll, I'm, I'm going to go with Cordero Patterson. However you line him up, if it's Bobby Wagner in the running game, if it's one of the safeties covering him in the passing game, they're going to try to spread him out. Again, I got a chance to talk uh, to my former college roommate, Michael Petrie, the running back coach for the Atlanta Falcons. They want to get him in different ways. They want to get him the ball in space. Again, you talked about him being a former receiver, but having the running back mindset, why not try to have him run on corners then, right? So expect him to be kind of moved all over the field a little bit today. Uh, and, and whoever matches up on him to be able to tackle him if he catches the ball. DeMarco, you want to go next? Wow. Uh, I'll go with Grady Jarrett versus everybody oh, on yeah. the Rams offensive line. Uh, look, he's a six footer. He's a fire hydrant in the middle of the sidewalk. That's yes. something you have to watch out for. A bowling ball with legs, so he's tough. I tried to say this on the uh, between the horns. There's not much that separates him and Aaron Donald. There are a few things, but right. not many. He is just as disruptive. He is a pinball in there. So the Rams struggled last week to keep interior pressure off Matt Stafford. It's getting worse with Grady Jarrett today. Good point. I'm going to go with Allen Robinson against A.J. Terrell. Um, and, and I can't wait to see what they do with A-Rod today, right? Like, do you start with a bubble screen? Just put it in his hands, make right. him feel good? I mean, I think he was emblematic of the game plan not going right for the Rams, their inability to get to where they wanted to on their play sheet because he was two or three in almost every progression, which yes. makes sense except for Stafford so seldom got to two or three in that progression because the clock was going off in his own pocket. Terrell was one of the best corners in the league last year. Uh, he matched up against Mike Thomas and did well for the better part of that game, but then Jameis got going made some great throws to Mike late, and they got two touchdowns to come back and win that game. That matchup on the perimeter on the backside of some plays I think could be fascinating. We have not forgotten about Ricky Hollywood. Let's go back now to our sideline reporter for this pregame show delivered by Little Caesars for her matchup to watch. Yeah, it's funny. We're on the same field. We're just in, in different areas, and I feel so far away from you guys. I'm going to have to come give you a hug right after this. I want to watch, watch Matthew Stafford because I think this is his game for a get right game. And sort of like uh, DeMarco, how you said, you know, Grady Jarrett against everyone. How about Matthew Stafford about getting to all of his progressions, getting through all of his looks. And how about taking that week one and closing the door on it and let's end all the discussion pieces and watch Stafford have his get right game. Um, and they were all kind of circulating around the same thing, which is the Rams have better players in this right. matchup and on most Sundays. It didn't look that way against the Buffalo Bills, who might be the best team they face all season. But sometimes it just comes down to your stars playing better than their opposition. And there were very few of them other than maybe Cooper Cup you could have said that about in week one. Yeah, no, I think you're exactly right. Uh, week one, you came into a, a situation where a team, all they thought about was that loss against the Chiefs. And they wanted to come out and prove themselves. Where well, you got to drop a banner, hold the trophy, get your rings. Let's see if you can bounce back with that championship mentality. One more thing. Cam Akers, oh, yeah. how do you respond? I could care less about who we're going against. I could care less about all the other stuff. How do you respond today? I think that's going to be important as well. DeMarco, a finishing thought? I'll just, we went through the whole show and didn't say Jalen Ramsey. Yeah, we have complete confidence, right? No question. But you know, yeah. every team is going to come after him and try him. Somebody, somebody's going to pay. It may be Mariota today. I like the way you finish on that note. Okay, that is a wrap for this live pregame show from SoFi Stadium, anticipating week two between the Atlanta Falcons and your Los Angeles Rams. As always, it's delivered by Little Caesars. Make sure you order Little Caesars online during the Pizza Pizza pregame and get it delivered or pick it up in store in the Pizza Portal. This is a 105 kickoff on Fox. You can listen to the three of us on 710 ESPN or on Jack FM 93.1 here in the greater Southland. For MJD, for DeMarco Farr, for Ricky Hollywood, I'm JB Long. Rams and Falcons, week two before L.A. goes on the road for back-to-back -back division tests against Arizona and San Francisco. Hope you're having a great weekend, everyone. Thank you for spending part of it with us. Here we go from SoFi Stadium.